الزيارة الرسمية لصاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء إلى واشنطن اشتملت على برنامج حافل من توقيع الاتفاقية الشاملة للتكامل الأمني والازدهار بين مملكة البحرين والولايات المتحدة الأمريكية علاوة على عدد من الزيارات المهمة التي أكدت عمق العلاقات التاريخية بين البلدين وأهميتها الاستراتيجية في تطوير وتعزيز العديد من المجالات الأمنية والاقتصادية والعلمية نتابع معكم أبرز محطات هذه الزيارة خطوة مهمة وزيارة تاريخية عكست حجم العمل والتنسيق المسبق قبل وصول صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء إلى أرض الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية لتضع البحرين بذلك بصمة جديدة في بناء علاقاتها الخارجية مع كبريات الدول حول العالم والتي من أهمها الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية كدولة صديقة وشريك استراتيجي ارتبطت معها البحرين بعلاقات وثيقة جدا عكست الاهتمام الكبير بتنمية وتعزيز هذه العلاقات والاستفادة منها في مختلف المجالات بعد وصول سموه حفظه الله إلى أرض الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية بدأ بزيارة إلى أحد أهم مراكز صنع القرار السياسي في واشنطن وهي وزارة الخارجية الأمريكية حيث المكان الذي التقى به الوفد البحريني مع عدد من كبار المسؤولين الأمريكيين وشهد ترحيبا وحفاوة متميزة عكست التوافق والتفاهم الذي جمع قادة البلدين حول العديد من الملفات والقضايا ذات الاهتمام المشترك This moment reflects a great deal of hard work from our teams, and uh, I want to applaud as well all of my colleagues on the American side for the work that they put into this, and I believe helps us define the very promising work ahead. As both a major non-NATO ally and a major security partner, Bahrain is already one of the United States' longest standing and closest partners in the Middle East. In today's meeting, uh, we'll discuss how to deepen our strategic partnership including through the framework that brings us here today, the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement. This agreement deepens our cooperation in three very important ways. Now, first, it expands our security and defense collaboration. For more than 25 years, of course, uh, Bahrain has hosted the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet, and we stand shoulder to shoulder in our mission to secure critical shipping lanes that sustain the entire global economy. This agreement will strengthen coordination between our armed forces and the integration of our intelligence capacities, uh, allowing us to even better deter and respond to threats as they arise. Uh, second, it enhances our economic relationship. Uh, since 2006, our free trade agreement has more than tripled trade and investment to about $3 billion a year. Today's agreement builds on this, uh, in part by identifying new investment opportunities for the private sector uh, partners in the United States. And third, At a moment when technology holds so much potential to better our lives, this agreement advances scientific and technical cooperation between our countries, including through increased information sharing and exchanges between our people. And already, uh, we're collaborating in areas like uh, health security and digital technology. Uh, I think we'll see, uh, with today's signing, uh, all of this become uh, elevated. Uh, we'll start the process of working together on renewable energy, on carbon capture technologies, and other cutting-edge endeavors. This agreement is also the first binding U.S. international agreement of its kind of remote cooperation in developing and deploying trusted technologies, which are vital to protecting our critical systems and our people's privacy, uh, all of this from bad actors. Uh, but I think uh, when you, you step back, at the heart of the agreement is a shared goal, uh, working together to build a region that is more secure, that's more prosperous, and that's more connected to the world economy. Uh, we're looking forward to using this agreement as a framework for additional countries uh, that may wish to join us in strengthening regional stability, economic cooperation, and technological innovation. Uh, in our meeting, the Royal House, I also very much look forward to um, discussing ways to continue advancing regional integration, something that Bahrain has been in the forefront of, of doing. This is uh, the third anniversary this week of the uh, Abraham Accords. Uh, through which Bahrain became one of the first countries to normalize relations with Israel. 
Barney's continued its leadership through the Negev Forum. Uh, the Foreign Minister and I were participants in its first, uh, in its first meeting. Um, our two countries are co-leading efforts in the Forum to strengthen cooperation on regional security and health, another very important item on our agenda today. We'll also continue our dialogue on the full range of human rights issues, which are a core pillar of the United States foreign policy. That includes areas like combating trafficking in persons, where Bahrain continues to make important headway. It also includes ensuring that fundamental freedoms are protected, which contributes to Bahrain's progress. For more than 130 years now, Bahrain and the United States have forged a partnership that has evolved to meet the challenging needs of our people and the changing needs of our people. From Americans building a school and hospital in Manama in the early 20th century, to the start of our diplomatic relations more than five decades ago, to our troops serving side by side in Operation Desert Storm in the 1990s. Today's agreement that we're about to sign builds on that very proud and important history. It ensures that this vital relationship between our countries will continue to do what it needs to do, which is to deliver for our people. And I believe help build a more positive future for people throughout the region. So with that, um, again, it's wonderful to have you here. Let me turn this over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor and a privilege to be standing in front of you on this historic day. I have witnessed the closeness of our two countries, and I have understood through uh, deed and word what it has taken to get us to this point. Long ago, uh, over 130 years ago, a, a group of missionaries came and established the first uh, we could call it hospital, but I think it was really just a, it was a small little health center that did become, in fact, a hospital in 1903. Uh, we were the first forward operating base for the U.S. Navy in the Middle East, in the Kingdom of Bahrain, 1948, I believe. We have consistently uh, been the first to promulgate uh, the free trade agreement that we did uh, as the first GCC country to sign it. And we are the first country to, to, to create the, uh, the U.S. trade zone that we believe is going to be the foundation of something that we are both so passionately working towards. Uh, you articulated exactly what this agreement is about. It is uh, of, I believe, in a sense of imperativeness, mm -hmm. a need. The world today is faced by a number of choices. People are faced by a number of choices either the rise of authoritarianism or the growth of libertarianism. And the international rules-based order that manifested itself um, in the early 19th century um, was the foundation for the freedom of trade, of the movement of ideas, of people all over the world. And we're all beneficiaries of that. And those common values, the values of a, of a Bedouin in the desert of Arabia who could pick up his house and move uh, if you didn't like the level of rainfall he had or something, um, is essentially the freedom to go where one wants to go, to live how one wants to live, and to build a future for one's children that is hopefully brighter than the one that they lived. This agreement, by focusing not only on security and defense, which is essential, but also on economy, on the economy, on people, and on technology, will be the foundation for a new global architecture, I believe, as it's open-ended, it's, it's, an open, it's an open agreement. We will be welcoming uh, more members, hopefully, um, that I think is as significant as the decisions that were taken after many of the global upheavals historically. So um, we are setting sail uh, confidently. We are reaffirming our direction. And I couldn't be more honored uh, on behalf of His Majesty to be here to sign this agreement on this day with you in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. توافق تاريخي كبير شامل ومتكامل يهدف إلى مزيد من الازدهار والتطور يدفع بمستويات التعاون بين البلدين الصديقين إلى تكامل غير مسبوق في المجالات الأمنية والعسكرية والتكنولوجية والتجارية والاستثمارية يسهم في تقوية المنظومة الأمنية والاقتصادية للمنطقة وهذا ما وقع عليه الجانبان في اتفاقية تاريخية محورية 
تمثل إعلانا مشتركا عن نية كلا البلدين لمواصلة مسيرة التقدم نحو المستقبل وتسهم في تعزيز التعاون البناء من أجل الازدهار للأجيال القادمة وتعد منطلقا محوريا من منطلقات التعاون الدولي وفق المصالح المتبادلة والرؤى المشتركة في مجالات الدبلوماسية والأمن والاندماج الاقتصادي والتجاري الاتفاقية الشاملة للتكامل الأمني والازدهار بين مملكة البحرين والولايات المتحدة الأمريكية اشتملت على عدد من البنود المحورية أبرزها أنها تعزز التعاون في مجالات الدفاع والأمن والتكنولوجيا الناشئة والتجارة والاستثمار وتدعم أهداف إعلان اتفاقات إبراهيم ومنتدى النقب وجهود التكامل الإقليمي الأخرى علاوة على أنها تعزز الأمن والاستقرار والازدهار الإقليمي وردع التهديدات الموجهة إليهما كما تعمل على تحديد فرص الاستثمار الاستراتيجية التي يستفيد منها أكثر من طرف وهو ما يعزز التعاون الاقتصادي الثنائي بين البلدين ويعمل على تطوير التعاون العلمي والتقني والتبادلات العلمية والتكنولوجية برنامج هذه الزيارة التاريخية لسمو ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله اشتملت على لقاءات مهمة مع عدد من كبار المسؤولين في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية ومن أبرزها لقاء سموه في البيت الأبيض بالسيد جيك سوليفان مستشار الأمن القومي بالولايات المتحدة الأمريكية واجتماعه حفظه الله مع سعادة السيد لويد أستون وزير الدفاع بالولايات المتحدة الأمريكية حيث أكد سموه خلال اجتماعاته على أن مملكة البحرين بالاستناد إلى ما يربطها مع الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية الصديقة من علاقات استراتيجية تاريخية مستمرة في تكثيف مساعيها المشتركة بما يعود إيجابا على المصالح المتبادلة بين البلدين والشعبين الصديقين ويصب في تعزيز مسارات التكامل الاقتصادي ونشر الأمن والسلام والازدهار وفق رؤى حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه